Hey YouTube, it's your girl Dr. J and I am excited to start this STEM series, homeschooling STEM. So I thought about the different ways in which I could do it and the way that I focused, the way that I decided on was to go ahead and go through the resources that we use, you know, one for each video and then a little bit later I'll come back and talk about how you can put it all together into a curriculum if that's what you want to do. The first um, one that I decided to focus on was Snap Circuits. And actually, before I go into it, I want to do a big disclaimer that I'm going to talk about a lot um, on these videos. And that is when it comes to STEM, especially science, technology, and engineering, you want to allow your kids to just get in there and play. A lot of times as homeschoolers, we want to make sure our kids know the proper definition and not just, oh, look, it works. We want them to know how it works and why it works and when does it not work. That's not really something that you have to focus on with um, those three areas. And the reason is because your child will begin to make those connections on their own as they work with the different resources what you want to do is just be there as they learn if they ask questions but it's not important for your child to really know the correct terminology or know the intricacies behind why things work until they're really at that high school level as long as they're at middle school level and below especially with early elementary you don't want to get caught up in the terminology you don't want to get caught up in trying to help them understand how things work what's going to happen is they are going to get it as they play as they go through the resources they are honestly going to get it they're going to begin to understand how it works they may not have the words to tell you exactly what's going to go what's going on but they are going to get it and hopefully that will help take some of the intimidation out of it because a lot of this, this technology, you know, some of it, it wasn't around when we were young. And, you know, if, if you don't have, you know, a lot of experiences in the technical field or if you're not an engineer or you're, you know, it can be a little bit intimidating because you see all these pieces and you go, uh, I don't know how they work. You don't have to know how, the, how they work. Your children will begin to figure that out and it, they don't have to have all the right words. So first, if I could recommend one thing right off the bat, if, if people said I can only buy one thing, what is it? I would recommend Snap Circuits. The reason why I say start with Snap Circuits is because Snap Circuits, they're ready to use right out of the box. They can be used by relatively young children. Anybody who's about, you know, the age of four and above, they can start using Snap Circuits and they are expandable. So, um, you can get different level kits. The first kit um, is uh, a one, SC100, and the, one, the number on the kit is going to really tell you how many experiments can be done or are going to be in that guidebook. So, SC100, you're going to get this book, and it's projects 1 through 101. And, again, I love it because even young children can use it on their own because for instance project number one it's electric light and switch and the thing that you will see right away is that it's very picture heavy and wonderful thing about the pieces they're numbered so these blue pieces these are your snaps these are your circuits that are going to connect everything your kids don't have to know that you don't have to tell them just say look for the number so you have to and they'll figure out quickly when I see a two it's going to have two snaps. When I see a four, it's going to refer to four snaps. When I see a six, it's going to be a six snap. So that's going to be really clear for them. And then when they pull out the kit, they can see, okay, I need a B1. B1. Okay. As they work with the kit, as they work with the kit, it's going to be clear for them that B is going to stand for battery. And, you know, it, it'll tell you exactly what kind of batteries 
to use um, and then they're gonna see that this is 3 volt why because I'm using two 1.5 volts they won't figure that out right away they don't have to figure that out right away that's gonna come as they play with the kit so they need one battery pack it's going they're gonna count okay I need one two three four twos okay I gotta find four twos I'm going to need one three they're gonna be able to go in their kit and pick up one three they're gonna say I need a L1 okay as they work they're going to eventually figure out that when it says L that means light and I need a S1 okay as they work they're gonna fi figure out this is a switch it has an on off okay that they don't need to know that right away all they need to do is build it they're gonna build it they're gonna put it together and they're gonna realize wow when I slide this to on that light comes on okay so right away they make light what child isn't happy about making light okay so that's gonna be the first project that they do then as they go through they're gonna like project number 40 motor controlled sounds again that's awesome annoying for you because it's loud but they're gonna be that's what they're gonna be able to do when they get to project 86 that's music alarm combo okay bomb squad you know that's it's, it's basically bomb squad because of the sounds you know motor sound combo what kid doesn't like to make sound make noise make mama crazy because it's so loud okay so Ninety eight simple water alarm and then it's going to talk walk them through the different variations of what they're going to do to um, get to that one hundred and one different experiments. Your, your child is going to be able to do all of that if you just get that one hundred kit. If you get the three hundred kit, you're going to get that first book and then you're going to get this book along with it. Okay, you're going to see that there's additional pieces. You got some additional pieces that you didn't have in that 100 kit. And so when they start at, they're going to start at 102. Okay, batteries in a series. And then they're going to build up to that level. If you get a 500 kit, okay, you're again, you're going to start seeing some additional pieces that they don't use in some of the earlier kits. This one is going to have the first two books plus this book, okay? There's a new series where you have this book is going to take you from 512 to 692 because it's a 750 series kit. It's going to give you the rest. This. This is um, a PC project. It's a computer interface because with that new series, you're going to do stuff where with the CD-ROM, you're going to be hooking up the contraptions that you build so that they will either feed into your computer, um, to the computer program, or you'll be able to control the, the, your creation through that. Now, that's not till later. You don't have to get that. The great thing about Snap Circus is that you can always buy expansion kits. So if you can only start and comfortably afford that SC100 kit, that's going to be fine. Your child is going to be able to do 100 experiments just using the book. As your child gets better, they'll be able to start doing different experiments on their own. Some things that's really great is they're going to figure out just on their own what a circuit is. Okay, if I'm, you know, snapping these things together and if, they're, if something's not working, that must mean that I may not have something snapped together tight enough. Okay, if it says the light is supposed to work but the light's not coming on, first I'm going to check all my circuits to make sure my circuits are acting right. If my circuits are all connected well, I need to check my batteries. Maybe my batteries need changing. So that's one of the things that I really, really love about the kit. It allows kids to really develop and develop their problem-solving skills. Another thing, it's really easy to keep it all together. Your kids are always going to build on this base. There's one base that comes with every kit, so except for an expansion kit because they're going to assume that you have a base, but it's always going to come with the base. 
and your child will always build on that base. Another thing is that um, I I have mine in a plastic bin. These are, you know, all my stuff. The reason why I have it there is because we have several kits, um, and I just throw everything in there. It fit into my um, bookshelf where the things are really well. However, if you have the space and it can lay long, everything has its own compartment that it fits back into, so it's really easy to keep everything kind of nice and neat. As your kid, um, if your kid really enjoys that and, and they want to go and do some other snap circuit type things, um, there's other specific kits you can have. Like this one is a Rover. And my kids, they, they play with the Rover. Um, they like the Rover. It's remote control and they can do different things with it. But I would not suggest starting with the Rover. There's only so many things you can do. There's only um, about you know 25 projects that you can really do with it and it's just a you know you know when, when you look at it, it's like okay it's just a car it's either going to go forward or backwards or whatever so I actually wouldn't suggest starting with this kit um if you have a green child like like I do I have a green child they have a snap circuits alternative energy kit and it has a hundred and twenty nine projects um, these are the different pieces that come with it, so it's it's really cool um, because they'll be doing more green energy type projects. So again, I still um, recommend starting with that base kit, but if your child is just, if, if they just love green energy or, or you're going to be doing an environmental sciences study or something like that, then, then this, is, this is really good too. Um, it, all the projects, they're all going to have those same type of directions and then also you guys saw like a little box for each and that box basically is going to tell them what is the science behind what they're doing as they start to do it as as they they build the things one or two or three times that's when you start to read the little box and and help them understand exactly what's going on but just start with it being fun don't don't let it feel like school that that's one of the big things with stem you want it to not feel like a burden and being good at stem being good at science and technology and engineering what makes somebody an amazing engineer is creativity being able to problem solve being able to look at something and say okay this is how it works and and this is how i can do it differently um that's what being good at engineering is going to get you when it comes to technology there are a lot of people who are really really good with computers even though they don't understand exactly how they work a lot of times people figure out how computers really work by taking them apart upgrading them themselves building their own computer and so stem is a hands-on type of learning um, I love STEM for boys and for girls. For boys, it's because it just kind of naturally flows with how they like. They, they, they like to just, you know, they don't want the directions. They just want to jump in there and start making it happen, and that's great. It's also wonderful for girls because it allows them to see that technology is not scary, and it's not just a boy thing. And so it creates just a really fun environment for your kids I'm a big fan of it, but I, if, if people say, where should I start with STEM? I am very comfortable recommending a start with snap circuits. It's going to be fun even for older children. It's going to be something that a younger child can do with very little support. If you have children three or under in the home, you want to be careful because, you know, there are little pieces and if they get swallowed, life gets really hard. Also, if you want to extend the life of your kit and your batteries, you want to take your batteries out of um, the battery um, holders when you are when they're not being used. That's going to let your batteries last longer and it's going to stop corrosion. So hope this helps. This is Dr. J and I'm out. Bye bye.